Did you know that Canada is the global model for migration? Did you know that Canadian immigrants are some of the most respected, most educated and biggest contributors to local communities? Join us today as we discuss issues pertaining to migration within local communities. Welcome to Community Connect. Thank you for always being there to connect with us as we share the amazing and incredible stories of people who are doing great things to make a difference in the community. On today's episode of the show, we'll be talking about diversity and inclusion. And it is my great pleasure today to have Dr. Lisa Gunderson and Miss Fiona Bramble. They will be sharing with us their wealth of experience on working on diversity and inclusion within our local community. It is such a great pleasure to have you here today. Dr. Lisa is a clinical counsellor. She has a PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Southern California. She is the community liaison for the African Heritage Association of Vancouver Island and a member of the Greater Victoria Police Diversity Advisory Committee. A lot of the things that you do in the community are around diversity. What, what is that experience like? Um, it's been quite amazing, actually. So I have a company called One Love Consulting. Under that umbrella of One Love, I do a lot of equity training okay. around issues of diversity and inclusion. And Miss Fiona Bramble. She's the editor and founder of Here Magazine, a print and digital platform by and for newcomers to Canada to connect with local communities. She's a second generation French, Irish, Scottish, Canadian settler and um, she's the co-chair of the greater victoria alliance for literacy and she also serves on the advisory committee of the local immigration partnership being a french scottish irish canadian um it's interesting to know that you feel there's a huge need to have a representation for that um, section of the population what motivated that interest um, well on a basic level it's a social justice issue um, finding uh, a space for anyone to express their experience um, and for newcomers in particular it's very difficult to connect with those people in the community right. and share those stories mm -hmm. so someone who's already established and entrenched in the community I felt needed to spearhead that and um, so here magazine has become a non-profit mm -hmm. um, in the past, how long, for how long? So we became a not-for-profit two and a half years ago. Okay. Um, we felt that that better reflected the community work that we were doing. Mm -hmm. So that did, that lent us, lent us some credibility, but also opened up other opportunities in terms of connecting with the Community Partnership Network, okay. um, which is an initiative of the Intercultural Association. Mm -hmm. And also connected to that, what grew out of that is the Local Immigration Partnership Strategy. So. Dr. Lisa, with your work um, with AHAVI, with the Police Diversity Board and every other thing that you do, what would you say the face of multiculturalism in Victoria is? It's really broad. It's a really broad spectrum. And I think the work with the Greater Victoria Police Diversity Advisory Committee, or what we call the DAC, which is a lot easier to deal <laughs> with, <laughs> um, is a good reflection of that. Yeah. So on the DAC, for example, we have representatives of the multi-ethnic community. So so there, I represent the African Heritage Association. We have people representing the Indian Cultural Association. We have somebody representing the um, African Immigrant Association. Yeah. And then we also have as part of that the religious, multi-religion kind of diversity that we find in religion. So we have the Ishmali group represented. We have the Jewish Association represented. Mm -hmm. um, we then think about our sexual orientation and diversity within that, and so we have the diversity of sexual orientation represented mm -hmm. through things like Pride, Victoria Pride, and they right. represent and the voice for the GLBT community, okay. right? So you see that when we talk about multiculturalism, I like to say multi blank, right? <laughs> it could be multi-ethnic, multilingual, mm -hmm. um, it could be dealing with religion, it could be dealing with orientation, gender fluidity. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's kind of what is happening here in Victoria. It's okay. representing all of those voices. Mm -hmm. On the surface, we don't necessarily hear about those oh, conversations. No. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And sometimes it's easy yeah. to think there really isn't anything <laughs> going on. Yeah, it's yeah. easy to think my voice 
doesn't count but yeah. um just hearing that the police for instance yeah. has this going on mm -hmm. is um right. quite encouraging yes yeah um and i'm sure there are one or two other platforms that are coming up around you know yeah. be becoming more representative of the um marginalized population oh absolutely mm -hmm. i think that would be the case and i think like whether it's verks which is representing newcomers mm -hmm. and trying to help ease that transition in becoming you know part of the settler community here yes. that's a big piece so you do have a bunch of organizations like that and then like you said in various pockets whether it's education mm -hmm. whether it's policing whether it's just in regular community you have different organizations mm -hmm. who are trying to represent mm -hmm. that voice. And yeah. you're right, we don't do a good job, I think, at all getting out information to the public or anything right. like that. So a venue like this is a wonderful. So if we have all of this, which we actually do have um, going on in the community, it's quite interesting to know that there are still some stereotypes about immigrants. Um, yeah, yeah, I've heard Where some. Where do we start? <laughs> exactly. Fiona, we've had some conversations around some of the wrong perceptions of um, immigrants. Yes. Why would yeah. you think we have such? I'm about to say ignorance, and I just want that understood that I mean lack of knowledge and education. I'm in a bit of a unique position because the magazine acts as a bridge between sort of established Canadian culture and newcomer culture. So I think I hear sometimes different stereotype assumptions mm. than perhaps you would in your work. When I talk about my work and what we do, um, everyone I speak to, almost everyone I speak to, assumes immigrant equals refugee. Yeah. Right. So right. that's, that's an initial stumbling mm. block. And then, of course, once you go down the rabbit hole of a refugee stereotype and it's fraught with so many things, um, unfortunately, the media is representing people flooding into Canada and these are refugees and, and migrants and, and um, so that creates this misconception mm -hmm. that yeah. every immigrant is a refugee when right. actually refugees yeah. only make up about 10 percent. And I'm just um, defining that refugee piece. It's not just people who have needs, real needs. It's, it's people who are here to take. It's people who are filling up um, our spaces and taking up our opportunities. That's how subconsciously um, that is interpreted. That's very much a yes. predominant negative yes. stereotype mm -hmm. about refugee. And immigrants. adding to that is this feeling not only of taking, but they are going to change so drastically what we know right. as Canada yes. that what are we going to become? And mm -hmm. there's this fear that they're going to come in and yeah. do all of these things to mm -hmm. the society. Mm -hmm. And they're not looked at as being additive, right? Like that there's something positive about this. And this is quite personal for me because I am an immigrant, right? I chose to come here from the United States. Mm -hmm. And it's one of these things where it's shocking to me how people perceive us in not having a lot of education. Um, an example, if you speak with an accent, right, right. and you are English speaking, people will be like, oh, you speak English very well. Yeah. And, and it's like, and clearly. okay, right? Yeah. Well, one, maybe that's the country, the, the language mm -hmm. of the country I come from. So I'm also like Jamaican immigrants, case. right? Mm -hmm. And in my case as well. Mm -hmm. from, and secondarily, it's this idea that everybody is like ESL, English mm -hmm. as a second language, and I hate that term. I prefer English language learner because, yes. at least in my experience, the people that I've seen come here, English sometimes is their third, fourth, fifth mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a lot of challenge around the perception of who we are and I think part of that definitely is a lack of education mm -hmm. in terms of what it even takes to come into the country. Yes. And I don't think a lot of people understand, understand that. that. We have to have a certain level of education, we mm -hmm. have to have a certain amount of finances to support ourselves, yeah. so that there really is a lack of understanding of what immigrants bring and the benefits we bring mm -hmm. and the fact that we're needed here. But you know? again, in that context, yep. we're preaching to the choir. Exactly. And there yep. really is a need for that outreach. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, um, these are real issues in the community. And it will be definitely great to see what practical steps we can take to, to circumvent all of this, to move from not just being um, a diverse community or a diverse workplace or whatever the case is, to a more inclusive and welcoming community where the needs are recognized and the benefits that immigrants, that newcomers bring are also appreciated. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Dheeraj and I'm out here today on the streets of Victoria. 
asking the community members a very few interesting questions. What might those questions be? Let's find out. Hi there, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hi, what's your name? Hi, it's Anaf. Hi, this is Azia. Uh, my name is Zadar. Sean. I'm Meg. I'm Addy. Jordan. Jordan Romain. Savannah. Uh, Emma. Hi, Larry. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Hi, I'm Abigail, and this is my husband. Erminio. Ian. Katomi. You. Hi, what is your name? Hi, I'm Shafali. What does community mean to you? Um, I would say... Um... Uh... Um... Community, I don't know. Uh, um... Community really is just being um, about making things better and doing it together. I think the community is actually a group of identical or non-identical people. Caring for each other. Caring for each other. Definitely. Yeah, help your neighbor. <laughs> community means a group of people together. That means more to me than anything, a diversity, you know, and being inclusive. To me, it mostly means friends and a lot of different kinds of food. Community is a place where I can coexist and thrive. What does community mean to you? Um, it means like getting a bunch of friends and knowing people. How we all interact and work amongst each other, I guess. How we all respect each other. And exploring your own town uh, just the way everybody would in their own way. An at-home feeling like comfort. Where I feel loved and where I feel welcomed. Um, where I am able to share my opinion without being judged. And in general, where I'm welcome, yeah. Feeling like you belong, I guess. Knowing the people around you. Yeah. I think it's a group of individuals who come together, work together to create a better atmosphere, environment for, for everyone. I think community is coming together and making contribution, just doing your part to make a difference. What does community mean to you? Um, helping people and being nice to each other. And to me, community is where um, I can get support. I have a family that supports me, I have a family that is encouraging me to grow. Would you be able to summarize that for me in one word? Um, in one word, um, community is, um, to me, support. Now, whatever you said, can you put that for me in one word? Synergy? Very, very beautiful. Fascinating. In one word, um, it's fun. The community is home. Helping each other. Well, that's not one word. Um, <laughs> Could you summarize community in one word? <laughs> Comfort. Service. Home. Yeah, coexistence. <laughs> How do you say like togetherness? Yeah, for sure. I say just for like a lot of fun. Uh, inclusiveness. Oh, that's a good one. I would say contributing. Today we heard some really interesting answers on what community means to people. It is love. It is growth. It is thriving, it's friends, food, and a lot of fun. Now I'll take you back to the studio where Ruth's asking some really interesting questions from Dr. Lisa and Fiona. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Just before the break, we were talking about some of the stereotypes about newcomers to Canada and, and the need to recognize the benefits um, that newcomers bring and the need for them in our communities. And we still have Dr. Lisa and we have Fiona joining us today. So now that we have identified some of these stereotypes about newcomers in the community, what, what are the practical steps that we can take to move from just not just being a diverse community or society to becoming a more inclusive and, and welcoming one. How, what are the practical steps we need to take? Something that came up a lot in our discussions around the local immigration partnership was um, about the onus being on the receiving society mm. to also educate itself and to reach out to these new newcomers and um, and I think that that's what's really lacking. Mm -hmm. I, of course, there is will and desire in the community. We know that, but um, it's not a broad, a broad outreach mm -hmm. from our community. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and I think of it from kind of two perspectives: one that is personal as well as professional. And from a personal perspective, it's just educating yourself, right. is getting involved, go to the events, look and listen to the radio, and find out where you can go, and just kind of also searching yourself mm -hmm. and kind of understanding your own biases and maybe where you're uncomfortable, yeah. and that it's okay to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I think that's a real important message mm -hmm. for people to understand. 
understand mm -hmm. from a professional space and that's whether it's a business or whether it's education like schools K through 12 universities it's also kind of understanding what I call um, avoiding inclusion to exclusion right. and what that means is when we are for example hiring somebody and we like that they're diverse mm -hmm. and when they come into that space we want to make sure that space welcomes all of what they bring right and that's kind of the problem we don't necessarily like doing that so we might set up policies that end up actually excluding people mm -hmm. without really realizing it and so it really becomes important for organizations and institutions to really kind of look at themselves and ask themselves are we truly being inclusive and one of the things that I know we've spoken about in the past is how it's easy for strategic goals and plans to get swallowed up by culture yeah. Culture is, I mean, you could have all of these grandiose plans on paper and you have all of these things you're aspiring to get to become as an organization. But if you don't pay attention to the culture, it kills everything else. Absolutely. There was a person, I don't know who said the quote, but they said culture swallows strategy. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can have the best strategic plan in the world, but if your culture isn't set, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely true. Yes. And um, I'm also still going to want to tie this back to stereotypes. Um, it's one thing for people to be completely wrong. It's one thing for people to just be adverse to the idea of change. Yes. It's another thing to have good intentions, mm -hmm. but in, pra in the practical sense of it, that doesn't um, necessarily translate into good deeds. Right. So how do we go from, from incomplete information, from just having good intentions, to having good actions, yeah. to, to you know, building something that is both representative and um, sensitive to the needs and differences that exist. Just practical things that we can do. We all have biases, everybody knows that. These implicit biases that we have, these hidden biases, they come out in what we call microaggressions. Mm -hmm. They're these small little behavioral, verbal insults that happen on kind of a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And it leads to the fact that people can have good intention, mm -hmm. but still engage in discriminatory outcome. Right. And so one of the ways to have to deal with that is you bringing those unconscious biases kind of up to the surface mm -hmm. and some practical ways to do that you could do something like go online and take a implicit harvard bias test mm -hmm. right um, you could actually more practically talk to people immigrants mm -hmm. other people that are actually living these lived experiences and listen to what they're saying to you and actually believe them, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Their lived experience. Fiona, you'd spoken about um, refugees, like the full newcomer umbrella mm -hmm. being wrongly perceived as that one narrow category as refugees. And I feel like there is always that thing with the need for gratitude. Like, yes, you are, you know, you're so lucky so to, be to be here. here. Yeah, how do you <laughs> deal with that? Yes, that's that sense of, of gratitude and that these newcomers should be grateful that Canada opened mm -hmm. its doors um, is quite complex, actually, because um, the caretakers, the sponsorship groups, um, they, they create this sort of bubble around mm -hmm. these families and these individuals. There's a self-perpetuating mm -hmm. gratitude cycle. Mm -hmm. And um, so it is complex. That's that's a difficult issue to talk about. Right. And um, but you're right. In general, in Canadian society, more established Canadians mm -hmm. believe that they've done a good service to these people. Mm -hmm. And stemming from that is that is that perspective that these people are going to always be those people forever. Do we need to stop seeing them as the other? At what point does it need to happen for us to? find a balance as a community, as a society. So there's this idea, and you hear it a lot from Asian Canadians and Asian Americans, that there's this idea that they are the eternal foreigners. And I think that's kind of the idea around newcomers and immigrants coming mm -hmm. in, that they're never gonna be truly part of the fabric mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. And that's problematic. And I think the way that we end up dealing with that is through education from mm -hmm. a very young age, that there's a difference between nationality mm -hmm. and race and ethnicity. And under that nationality umbrella, 
of what makes a Canadian any of us can be Canadian. And it doesn't matter our accents or our voices or our religion or where we were born, that we've all bought into this ideology of what makes this nation mm -hmm. great, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think somehow we have to truly believe that in our spirit. And so it really requires us to be self-reflective. And when we have somebody who comes in and they're showing gratitude, that's one thing to show gratitude and, and be thankful for that, mm -hmm. but it's another to make sure we're careful not to abuse that gratitude, right? right? Not to exercise power and privilege over that gratitude. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have to be mindful. So if I come in and I criticize something about the society, that doesn't mean that I'm not grateful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I have to, and there has to be space for that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean because I come in now, I keep quiet because that's not what Canadians do. That's mm -hmm. not what we're about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so we have to figure out what that kind of really looks like. And again, I think starting with the little kids that this is how we teach them. Education. It really right. it all right. comes right. back to education. Mm -hmm. It really does. And making a conscious effort to, to give room Very conscious. Difference. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, the fact that you don't look or sound like me or the way I think you should yes. look does not mean there is anything wrong with you. Exactly. Uh, making an effort to understand where you're coming from is where the, the real change starts from. Yeah. And it begins with each of us. Yeah, it absolutely. Does. Yeah, so in, wrap, in wrapping up, um, mm -hmm. I would like to know, in your opinion, what, what would an inclusive community look like? The one thing I would ask people to do is stop being quote unquote um, color blind or mm -hmm. gender blind or anything mm -hmm. like yeah. that. Um, I really, believe that people think about that from a good heart space. It's mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to treat you any differently. I'm just saying you're just kind of like me. But when you say, oh, I don't notice that you're black. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, that's <laughs> not really true. Because <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> and when you say that without realizing it, it's kind of dishonoring my heritage mm -hmm. and, and my ancestry and the people who died because they mm -hmm. were like that. Mm -hmm. I think we are needing to shift from that to equity. So color equity, race equity, ethnic equity, right. which is saying that all of us have this equal wonderful thing we bring to the table, mm -hmm. and it's about equity. Mm -hmm. It's not about necessarily fairness or equality, mm -hmm. but it's about equity. And so if there's one thing your audience can take away is just kind of stop, notice us, right? For notice who for who we are, and it may make you uncomfortable, and that's okay. Yes. It's Thank just you. fine. Fiona, what, what would that look like to you, an inclusive community? What I was going to say was equitable access and opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a priority. Right, right. And that is meeting people where they are. Exactly. And to do that, we need to understand their needs and um, be willing to be uncomfortable, like you said. Oh my, thank you so much. Thank you. I, <laughs> I hope you were as educated as I am right now. Community Connect has become that platform for us to get information, interesting, juicy information about topics that are both relevant and very timely in the community. Do join us next time on another episode, even as we discuss some of these topics. Thank you for staying tuned. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy watching Community Connect as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. Join us next time as we bring you even more exciting and informative episodes of the show. Let's keep the conversation going. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Email us at communityconnectbc at gmail.com. Until next time.